we're really starting to stack up on the styles here. So we're getting quite a number of styles. And as you can imagine, as this page, this website gets more and more complicated, we're gonna have more and more styles. And as a result, it's not uncommon, like it's difficult sometimes to keep track of them. And here's what I mean by that. So I'm gonna show you an example of, let's be in the stitch file. And let's say we gave, remember we gave this inline style of font italic. Let's also give it a color of purple, just so it's really obvious. So our stitch has a color of purple, but since that is unique, it's an inline style just to stitch, then of course the home page isn't gonna have that color. All right, so let's say somewhere in our styling here, I'm gonna do it up more towards the top. Let's say we also gave a paragraph a style with a color of red. Okay, that should be pretty easy to see. So here's a, here's a problem. Let's look at our home page. Our home page has the color of red because if we look at our home page, our home page has this paragraph. And so all of our paragraph tags are being styled with this color red. No problem on this page, that seems perfectly fine. But here's where the problem comes in. Well, we also have a color defined for the purple uh, color purple here on the paragraph tag. So this is a very simplistic example, but it's a very um, it's a very relevant problem. And that is we have two styles that are conflicting. The browser has to make a choice. Am I supposed to be a paragraph with a purple font color? Or am I supposed to be a paragraph with a color of red? How does it know which one to pick? And it's gonna apply something called the rule of specificity. Well, that's kind of complicated. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to kind of pay attention when things don't come out the way you expect. For example, in this particular example, I might've thought, hey, how come this is not red? I asked for all of my paragraphs to be red and this is purple. So what you can do is use what we call the developer tools. So uh, I'm on Firefox, you can do this on Chrome but I'm gonna right click on the page and I'm gonna to go to inspect. Now inspect has some very powerful tools in it and I'm using it for a very simplistic example, but this will be the farther along you get, the more comfortable you get with this tool, the more it's gonna help you with um, problems that might come up. Actually, I think I'm in Chrome at the moment, I am. So you can also do it. Shucks, I didn't wanna do it. I'll do it in Chrome since I'm here. All right, so I'm doing it in Chrome. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, and you can do the same thing whether you're in Chrome or Firefox, is in the developer tools, you're gonna to see right here uh, is a rendition of the code as the browser has rendered it. So the browser read your web page, and it is applying all of these styles, and this is its interpretation of what you had written. All right, so let's look at this paragraph. I can get to the paragraph by drilling down here, and there's that paragraph. I can also get to that paragraph if I can't find it by drilling down. This little icon here with the arrow that's pointing into the box, I can click on that icon and then move over the different elements of my page until I get to the one I'm interested in, and there's that paragraph. You can see it in the box up here that's popping up. So it's the paragraph I'm interested in. I'm gonna click on that, which highlights the paragraph here in my HTML. And what I'm getting out of this is, if you notice on the right-hand side here, I'm getting all of the styles as they were applied by the browser. And this is really important because it applies it in a particular order. And the order matters because the order is gonna determine what it read last and what it finally decided when it came to a conflict. And the way that it's gonna read it, we need to read it from the bottom up. So the style, the first styles that got applied are down here. So the first styles that got applied were from the body tag and we can see where those styles were written with this little line on the right hand side. So these styles were applied and this is where they were applied from. And then if we go up a little bit further, these are all styles that were applied automatically by the browser. So there are what we call browser defaults. We'll look at those a little bit later. But the point is the browser had all of these styles kind of in its, in its uh, inherent in its browser already. So those styles were also applied to the paragraph. All right, then the next styles that were applied were this one. 
And you'll notice that it says color red and it got that style from the style CSS page. So it found that color and it applied it. But notice that it is crossed out. That means that something later overwrote this style. And so something, when it came to a conflict, something was more specific and therefore that's what got applied. So we're gonna continue up the chain here. And here it says right inside of the element is the color purple. So the element itself has the color purple. That is not um, checked, uh, scratched out. So we know that this is the color that ended up getting applied in order from bottom to top, in order of the way it rendered it. So when it got to the conflict, this is the one it chose. And you can click on this if you want to uncheck this value so it's not the one that's being applied. And then you can see that it's gonna go back to the original um, red, which was overwritten above. So this is a playground, true, that we can kind of click on and play with, but right off the bat, what it's gonna do is give you this visual of the order in which styles are applied, because we saw three different styles through the course of this, this journey. We saw that styles could be implied, uh, applied inline. We saw styles could be applied embedded. We saw that styles can be applied in a style sheet, but it's also very possible that even within the style sheet, things might overwrite each other. So if you get yourself to a point where a style isn't being rendered the way you expected it to, then come into your developer tools and click on that style and you will see all of the things that got applied to it. So this is a very good tool to get comfortable with early on in your development career.